Our video today will be over how to multiply decimals. Let's look at our number routine. It's called number line. Name a fraction that lies between these two decimals on the number line. So I see the decimal of 23 uh, hundredths and 27 hundredths. So can I name a couple of decimals between it? What about 24 hundredths, 25 hundredths, and 26 hundredths? Those three lie between 23 hundredths and 27 hundredths. I can even name things in the thousands place, like 241 thousands, 258 thousands. So now it says name a fraction that lies between. If I use 24 hundredths, 24 hundredths, I could use 25 hundredths, I can even use 26 hundredths. So, so 2400, 2500, and 2600. Can 2600 be simplified? Yes, I can divide both numbers by 2, so I get 13 50th. 2500, can 2500 be simplified? I can divide both numbers by 25, so I get 1 fourth. What about 2400? I can divide both numbers by 2 and get 12 50th. I can divide it by 2 again, divisible by 2, because they're even, so it'll be 6 25th. So I have many fractions. I have 2400, which is equivalent to 6 25th, 2500, which is equivalent to 1 4, 2600, which is equivalent to 13 50th. All of these are fractions that lie between these two decimals. So a scientist recorded the differences in weights of mice after a change in the diet and exercise routine. The differences were negative one half ounce, 2300 ounce, negative four tenth ounce, and one third ounce. Order these from least to greatest. I don't know about you, but I'm going to first draw a number line. So zero, I know, goes, I'm going to put zero in the center. And what do I remember from a number line? It goes from least two greatest, negatives are to left of zero, positives are two to right of zero. So I'm going to start with the things I can graph right away. Negative half. So negative half goes right here. And I know negative half is equivalent to negative 50 hundred. Half of a dollar, 50 hundreds, negative 50 hundreds. So I'm done with that one. 23 hundreds, that's easy. So I know it's going to go right of zero. All right, now next one. Negative four tenths. If I affix a zero here, that would be negative 40 hundredths. What do you know about zero, negative numbers to the left of zero? Let's see, count backward. One hundredths, two hundred, negative three hundredths, negative four hundredths, negative five hundred, negative thirty-eight hundredths. Negative 39 hundreds, negative 40 hundreds, negative 41, negative 42, and all the way to negative 50. So negative one half, then negative 40 hundreds. Now, so far we do from least to greatest, now one third. Can three go into the hundreds place? It cannot. So we're going to have to divide it. One divided into three groups. Can 3 go into 1? I don't think so. So 1 minus 0 is 1. How can I get rid of this remainder without changing this value of 1? Remember, I add a point 0. So I bring the 0 down. How many groups of 3 go into 10? 3 groups. 3, 6, 9. 10 minus 9 is 1. I need to get rid of this 1. Add another. I fix another 0. Bring it down. How many groups of 3 go into 10? 3 groups. So 10 minus 9 is 1. Isn't this deja vu? Oh, it's repeating. What number is repeating the 3? So I see a 3300 repeating. So that goes after to the right of 2300s. So put it from least greatest, negative one half, negative 40 hundredths, 23 hundredths, then one third.
and that's how you do it. So I recommend you do draw a number line to help you answer these type of questions. So let's get my highlighter out. So today we're going to be learning how to uh, multiply decimal. 3 times 1,500. Isn't that really saying 3 groups of 1,500s? So this is a 10 by 10 chart. Um, there's 100 uh, grids in, or squares in here. So shade 1,500s are in the 100 grid below. So 10, 15. But we need to shade how many groups of it? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 3 groups of it. So, that's the first group of 1500s, second group of 1500s, and, ooh, create a pen, and our third group of 1500s. So, in other words, we just shaded, shaded 100 grid to determine the value of three groups of 1500. Three groups of 1500 is equal to zero, I like this pen, 45 hundreds. Three times fifteen hundred is forty-five hundreds. How could I reach that answer without the concrete model? So three groups of fifteen. So it's fifteen, thirty, forty-five. I could have added it and get forty-five hundreds. Next one. All right. So it says two tenths times three tenths. I'm going to shade three tenths. Now I need, so I just shade it in highlighter, uh, three tenths of it. I need to shade two tenths of the three tenths. So I shade in two tenths of the three tenths. So how many of the squares are shaded twice? One hundredths, two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundred, six hundredths. So two tenths of three ten is equal to the decimal of six hundredths. So I started with three tenths. I shaded a portion of it, part of it. So I shaded six hundredths of it. Could you have gotten six hundred without this model? Hmm, let's see. I see. Well, I know two times three is six, so I see where the six come from. And let's see. This is the tenths place times the tenths place. And the answer is in the hundredths place. Interesting. So tenths times tenths, the answer has to be in the hundredths place. I try another one. Four tenths times seven ten. Shade seven tenths of this. Four, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, and seven tenths. Uh, I love the creative pen. Ooh, smiley face. Shade in four tenths of it. One tenth. This is so Two tenths. Three tenths. And four tenths. So I started with seven tenths. I shaded four tenths of it. So how many were shaded not once, but twice? I counted seven times four is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Hundreds. So it's four tenths of seven tenths is twenty eight hundreds. Could I have gotten that without this picture pictorial model? Well, four times seven is twenty eight. This is tenths times tenths. The answer must be in the hundreds place. Oh, I or shortcut. I count the number of digits behind here, two digits. Notice how your answer has two digits behind the decimal point. Well, if you haven't figured out now, let's look at patterns now. What is 12 times 3? 36. Without using a calculator, find the product of each problem. What's 8 times 9? 72. What's 24 
times 13. Uh, you know what? 24 times 13 equals 312. And what is 24 times 24? 24 times 18 going to equal 2. That's 432. 432. Any questions so far? Just basic third, fourth, and fifth grade. Now, taking the exact same problem, with that, now using a calculator, find the product of each problem below. So we have 0 and 12 hundredths. We're going to multiply by 0 and 3 tenths. <coughs> and we get the answer, the product of 0 and 36 thousandths. If we put in 800 times 9 tenths, you will get the answer of 72 thousandths. If you put in the calculator 24 hundredths times 13 hundredths, you will get 312 thousandths. And if you put in the calculator 24 hundredths times 18 hundredths, you would get 432 thousandths. You may ask yourself, why did Miss why did I keep skipping to this page to come up with this without using a calculator? So what is similar about questions one through four to questions one through eight? Well, one through four have all whole numbers, and these are um, all oh, sorry, these are all sorry, these was similar. They all have the same base numbers, like 12, 3, 12, 3, 24, 13, 24, 13. What is different? These are whole numbers, while these are decimal. So what decimal point patterns do you notice in the problems? So let's go back to look closely at, in more in depth in 5, 6, 7, 8. If you, multi if you look at number 1 and compare it to number 5, 12 times 3 is 36. Do you see the base of 36 right here? 12 times 3 is 36. But then, let's count the decimal points. 1, 2, 3. There are three decimal places. There are three places behind the decimal point. Notice how in our answer, there are three digits behind the decimal point. So they moved it 1, 2, and 3. Another way, more mathematical, is this is the hundreds place. This is in the tenths place. A hundred times tenths is thousands place. So our answer has to be in the thousands place. Let's look at number six. Let's compare it to number two. 24 times 13 is 312. Notice how 312 is the base right here. Let's count the digits. How many digits are behind the decimal point? There are four digits behind the decimal point. Do you notice how in our answer, one, two, three, four, we jump four digits? That's a shortcut. Or, more mathematical, hundreds place times hundreds place, the answer has to be in the ten thousands place. Tens, tens, hundred, thousand, ten thousand. Number seven. If you look at number compared to number 3, nine, 8 times 9 is 72. I see 72 here. Notice how we jump 1, 2, 3 digits. 1, 2, 3 digits. So 72,000. Or hundreds times tenths is thousands place. And last but not least, if you compare number 8 to number 4, 24 times 18 is 432. I notice 432 immediately right here. But we jump. How many digits are behind a decimal point? Four digits, one, two, three, four. So we have 432 ten thousandths place. So, how do you multiply decimals? You multiply normally. You pretend there's no decimal points. Then you put the decimal point back into the answer. You count the number of digits behind the decimal point, and in your answer, you move the same number of places. So, for example, 
If I multiply 51 times 13, I get 663. I notice there are two places behind the decimal point, so I jump it two places to 6 and 63 hundredths. <clears throat> one way. Another way is through estimating. I can estimate 5 and 1 tenths to 5 and 1 and 3 tenths to 1. What's 5 times 1? 5. So if I put the decimal point right here between the 6 and the 6, it's 6, whole, six close to 5. It is. It would have not made sense if I put a decimal point right here to 66. That is not close to 5. I prefer it this way. A lot of students I, throughout the year said, I hate that way. Tenths place times tenth place, the answer has to be in the hundreds place. Is 63 in the hundreds place? It is. So let's go back here. If I multiply 2 and 4 tenths times 12 hundreds, 24 times 12 is 288. I see three digits behind the decimal point. Notice how they moved it three digits. Um, they moved the decimal point by three digits. Three places, I meant. So that's why it's 288,000. Or we're multiplying by a number that's less than one. And so it's a portion, a part of it. So what's part of 2.4? 288,000. I prefer the mathematical tenths times hundred is thousands place. That's why this is in thousands place. So let's practice what we've just learned. We're going to copy this down. If you multiply three and fifteen hundreds by two and four tenths, what would you get? There's two ways of thought here. Some people prefer lining up the decimal point. I like that way. But do you notice that you have to affix a zero, just like when you add and subtract decimal. Others prefer just multiplying as you see it. Pretend their decimal point's not even there. So it's really you're just multiplying 315 times 24. And then you, either way. So if you prefer the first one of line up to this one, zero times five, zero. Zero times one is zero. Zero times three is zero. Done with that one. Put a placeholder here because now we're on focused on the tens if there are no decimal points. Four times five is 20, carry the two. Four times one is four plus two is six. Four times three is 12. Cross out the four. Now we are on the, if there are no hundreds place. So we need to add two placeholder to be on the hundreds place. Two times five is 10. I carry the one. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. Now I need to add these three rows together. I get 0, 0, 6, 5, 7. How many digits are behind a decimal point? Four digits. So I jump it 1, 2, 3, 4. So 7 and 56 hundreds or 7 to 56 10,000. Check my work. Estimate 3 times 2 is 6. This is 7 is close to 6. Do you like that way? Maybe you prefer just multiplying just like it's whole numbers. 4 times 5 is 20. Carry to 2. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. 4 times 3 is 12. I am done with the ones place if there were no decimal. So now I'm working in the tens place, so I need to put one placeholder. Two times five is ten. I carry the one. Two times one is two, plus one is three. Two times three is six. Now I have to add them up. So I have zero, six, two, add the two rows together, five and seven. Let's see, there are three digits behind the decimal points. One, two, three. I jump it three places. One, two, three. So, hey, same answer. Three times two is six. That's close to seven. Maybe you prefer the mathematic. I prefer this way. Hundreds times tens is thousands place. Do you see thousands place here? I do. So you can say that this is the answer. You can also shorten it by taking off that zero placeholder and just say seven to fifty six hundred. Some people prefer 7 and 560,000. Next one, 2 and 12 hundreds times 12 and 4 tenths. 
So I line up in this example, we line up the decimal point 12 and 40 hundredths times 2 and 12 hundredths. Notice how after you have fixed a zero, you will have to move the decimal point four places. Maybe you prefer not lining it up. It's up to you. Do you prefer lining up or not? I'm going to try it without lining up. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2. I'm done with the 1's place if there's no decimal. I have to affix a 0. 1 times 4, now I'm on a 10's place. 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1. I am done with the 10's place, now I'll focus on a 100's place. So I have to fix 2 0 placeholders. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Now it's time to add up these three rows together. So I get 8, 8, uh, 2, 2, 8, 10, plus 2 is 12. Carry to 1. 4, 1, 1 is 6, and 2. Let's see, I have to, let's count, where should the decimal point go in our, answer, in our product? Let's see, there are three places behind three digits behind the decimal point, so I must jump it three, so it's right here. We could estimate, what's 12 times 2 close to? 24. Is 26 and 280,000 close to 24? It is. Or you may like this way, tens times hundreds is thousands place, is 288 in the thousands place? It is. So it's up to you. Do you prefer lining up the decimal point and multiplying? Or do you prefer just multiplying like just normal whole numbers and then count the digits? I don't care as long as you get this answer. So where do you see multiplying decimals in real life? Grocery shopping. You do it. Your parents do it. Every time you buy produce, fruits or vegetables, you're paying it per pound. Well, most items. So... This summer, I bought grapes, black seedless grapes at H-E-B, so plug for them, um, to J.J. Watt, so 87 cents per pound. At H-E-B, Peter bought 5.1 pounds of grape, because no one, when you buy produce, no one buys the exact, like, 5 pounds, 4 pounds, because it comes in a bag. Estimate and find how, how much did Peter spend. So if, let's estimate, if you bought 5 and 1 tenth pound, that's about 5 pounds of grape. And he paid 80 cents for each pound. Is it 87, 87 cents? I'll say that's close to a dollar pound. So I might estimate he spent about a five dollars. So he spent about five dollars for the grapes. However, I wish grocery stores estimate. Well, sometimes they do it in fewer favor, sometimes they don't. So let's find the exact. So he bought 5.1 pound of grape. Each of those five pounds, each one of those pounds costs 87 cents per pound. How would you write 87 cents as a decimal? 0.87. So there's two ways of doing this. Do you prefer lining up the decimal point? So you may either, if I am going to line with the decimal point, let me take out a different pen. Make sure you affix a zero right here. So in our final answer, we will need to move four digits over, four places over. Maybe you don't like lining it up. Maybe you, on the other hand, prefer just multiplying as like whole numbers, and then you just move this three digits. So I'm going to start this side. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 5 is 35. I am done with this one place. I put a placeholder in the ones. Now I'm focusing on the tens. Again, there's no decimal point here. Eight times one is eight. Eight times five is 40. So it's time to now add these up. So I have seven, eight plus five, 13, carry to one. I have four and four. So where does the decimal point? According to our estimate, it's supposed to be around $5. So if I put a decimal here, that's 443, no, 44. So I think it's going to here. Let's show if it is. I move it 
one digit, two digit, or three digits behind the decimal point. As you notice, I moved it three digits. Or maybe you prefer it this way. Tenths times hundred is thousands place. So if we had to round this, it's about four dollars and around forty-four cents. As we don't pay things to the thousands place. The seven rounds up to this, so it's about four dollars forty-four, which is close to five bucks. So do you prefer it this way or do you prefer maybe lining it up? So let's line it up. Seven times zero is zero. Seven times one is seven. Five, seven times five is 35. I put a placeholder here, crosses out. So I'm on the tens. Eight times zero is eight. Eight times one is eight. Eight times five is 40. Now it's time to add it up. Uh oh, zero, zero, seven, thirty-five, zero. Oh, how, oh, let's go back here. How embarrassing. I did not multiply eight times zero correctly. Mm, 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 mm. I am embarrassed. I wish I could rewind this and redo this video, but I'm not. So we learn from our mistakes. So again, um, let's see, place order. Eight times zero is zero. <laughs> eight times one is eight. And eight times five is 40. Now let's add up the two rows. Zero, seven, 13, carry the one, two, four, and four. Do you notice how there are four digits behind a decimal point? One, two, three, four. I jump it four places and it go voila, same answer. You may have, how did I catch myself? So, so that's why I checked my work on this one. And I noticed how this answer was gonna be different from this one. So I knew I made a mistake somewhere. So, so. And last but not least, Greg bought eight and 12 100 gallons of gas, gallons of gas. Again, no one buys exactly eight gallons. Well, I guess you could go up to the tenant and tell them what exactly something out, but most people just pump and pay. There's about $2.02 .02 per gallon from Costco gas. Estimate and find how much did Greg spend. Let's estimate. So he bought about eight gallons of gas. It's about $2 a gallon for each gallon. So he spent about 16 bucks. Bucks. So our answer needs to be around 16. So we multiply 8 and 12 hundredths times 2 and 2 hundredths. Oh, it's already lined up. And even if we multiply as this whole number, it would look like this. So let's keep going. 2 times 2 is, so starting with a 2, one of ones place. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 8 is 16. Since I'm done with the ones place, now I'm focusing on a tens place, I need to put a placeholder here so it could be on a tens. 0 times 2 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 8 is 0. Well, that was what I could do, that was easy. I'm done with that one, now I'm focused on the hundreds place. So I need to put two placeholders so I can be on the hundreds place. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 8 is 16. If I added up these three rows, I would have gotten 4, 2, 4 plus 6 is 10, carried up 1, 2, 1, 1 is 4, 6, one. So I know our answer, according to our estimate, is supposed to be around $16. So if I look at this, it should be around right here. So I can see 16. Why? Let's see. There are four digits behind the decimal point. I moved the decimal point four places. Yep. Or hundreds times hundred is 10,000 place. Tens, hundred, thousand, tens out. And that is. So he spent uh, exactly $16 and 40 cents before you say but mr mr what about the two and four
In money, we do not play anything in the thousands or the ten thousands place. We stop at the hundreds place. So I rounded it. So 16 and 424 ten thousands rounds to 6 and 40 hundreds. 16 and 40 hundreds. So again, what we just learned today is how to multiply decimals. So you may either line them up and multiply and count the digits behind a decimal point and move it accordingly in your product. Or you could just multiply as if it's just whole numbers. So some people prefer like lining up, some people just multiply as it's whole number. And then you count the digits. I do not care. I don't think we math teachers care which one you use. Um, one of them is more efficient, multiply by whole numbers, but they both will give you the same answer.